I welcome you to this press conference that uh, we have organized together with members of the Ukrainian Parliament. Uh, my name is Terry Reinke. I'm the Vice Chair of the Green Group here in the European Parliament. Um, we uh, will have short interventions from our uh, Ukrainian colleagues who will speak uh, on behalf of themselves. Um, as I said, it's a very short notice setup because we only uh, decided to organize this yesterday. Apologies for that. We will try to make it um, as short and concise as possible. And now I'm going to hand over to my colleague uh, Viola von Cramon to uh, introduce uh, the members of parliament. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Terry. Uh, we are very happy to have our colleagues here, female colleagues from our Ukrainian radar. Uh, they are so brave. Uh, it took them um, uh, 24, 48, 78 hours uh, to, to come here, but nevertheless, they, they took the burden, and we would like to let them speak on behalf of themselves and let them tell you how the situation in Ukraine looks like. We would like to start with Maria Menseva. Uh, from, she's herself from Kharkiv, and we are now the head of the delegation here. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear colleagues, dear representatives of the media. We're using these opportunities to uh, reach out to all uh, EU member states with very concrete, uh, sometimes personal, but still uh, painful and shared uh, feelings and information by all of our nation. This is the 15th day of war, but it, it feels like it's the 15th year of war, you know. So every day uh, feels like a year in terms of the uh, the events in terms of losses as well, in terms of uh, the actions that we're all doing. Uh, some of us were volunteers before, were volunteers uh, somewhere in politics, but nevertheless today members of European Parliament are ful fulfilling as many duties as possible. In terms of delivering humanitarian aid, talking to different governments and embassies about the military aid, which we are still lacking, uh, in terms of uh, final the needs during the relocation of children, women, people with disabilities, elderly people. And as we talk right now, I know that a group of uh, children with disabilities from my home city, Kharkiv, is traveling from Romania to France already to be hosted and treated very properly there with their own needs. Therefore, dear colleagues, we uh, would also want to leave some time for the very concrete questions because you are being flooded with lots of information. Uh, of course, uh, we, we, would, we would call this uh, war an, a national um, movement uh, which joined all uh, political parties, all people across Ukraine. Those who are fighting in small villages holding no weapon at all, but only flags and national, uh, national anthem and their patriotic feeling, including those who are serving in military, including members of Ukrainian parliament or in, in local defense, including the members members of our families to withstand this evil and these atrocities which can't be called at any other names rather than war against uh, crimes against humanity. This all has to be taken carefully by ECHR, but by ICG, by all the international institutions which are dealing with international law and give a very firm response to all of it. We're collecting this data together with the Prosecutor General Office and all Ukrainians who, who can't hold arms, but they can hold their phones and respond to it, they are doing so. I will pass on uh, the, uh, to, to uh, my other colleagues to develop a little bit more in details and our needs. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Maria. The next one is uh, Lesia uh, Vasilenko from Party Holos. Uh, hello, colleagues. Uh, I am uh, from, uh, from an opposition party in Ukraine, but today it doesn't even matter uh, because all of Ukraine stands united. All of our political parties stand united to fight for our very existence because what we are witnessing since five in the morning of the 24th of February 2022 is an all-in aggression operation targeted at erasing Ukraine as an independent country of the face of the earth. 
So to do that, Putin is targeting the people of Ukraine, the 44 million of Ukrainians who are in the territory of Ukraine, half of those women and children. What we are witnessing now is not just atrocities, it is crimes of war, war crimes, the proper name for it in international law, and crimes against humanity. And we have done uh, a lot our delegation of nine members of parliament has done a lot to be present here, to be speaking to you, to be speaking to the people of Europe, to be telling the stories of the people in Ukraine who are today uh, living in basements, who are being born in basements and who die because of those basements and the impossible life there. We are telling the stories of our children, we are telling the stories of are dead because we feel that the world needs to know, needs to know the truth, needs to honor this truth and needs to think and act now. What Ukraine is facing is something that Europe is facing. What U Ukraine is fighting against is something that Europe will be fighting against if Ukraine falls. Our mission here is to keep the dialogue going but also have actions resulting from that dialogue so that Ukraine keeps standing and so that Europe keeps standing. We make many appeals today to members of the European Parliament, to uh, uh, different countries who provide bilateral help to Ukraine, and our appeal is one. Make sure that Ukraine tomorrow keeps standing as an independent state. The future of Europe as we know it today depends on this. We are very welcome to all kinds of questions, we're very happy to answer them, to give you clarity and understanding from first-hand sources as people who live in Kharkiv, Kyiv, Lviv, Ternopil, in all of the cities all across Ukraine which are being set on fire by Russian missiles, bombs and explosives as we speak. Some of those weapons, by the way, forbidden for years and years by the Geneva Conventions. Why? Because those weapons cause extreme suffering to the civilian population. Please bear that in mind as to the force that the world is dealing with right now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Lisa, maybe. Oh, yeah. Maybe uh, yes. Uh, yes. 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 My name is Evgenia Kravchuk. I'm deputy head um, of the faction of the party of Mr. Zelensky, President Zelensky, uh, Sloha Narodu. But as my colleague said, there are no um, 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 differences between the parties uh, and between the members of parliament. Uh, in, uh, in the matter of defending our state as an independent state. Myself, I'm a mother of eight years old daughter. She's not in school. She has to hide uh, because uh, constant danger to the lives of children of Ukraine are every day. I um, can say you a horrible number. 52 children had died already in this war that was started uh, by Putin in Ukraine. I know that you as journalists have a very uh, big mission. I'm a journalist myself before I became a member of parliament. Russia is trying to lie to the whole world about what they are doing in Ukraine. They're saying they're tra targeting um, militaries and fighting with the army. No, they're fighting with the whole nation, and the whole nation is in danger. Yesterday in Mariupol, Mariupol is a total Russian-speaking uh, city in the east of Ukraine, in Donbass, who is in siege right now, and people can't live through green corridors. Um, uh, here, uh, Russian um, air, uh, um, air jet uh, bombed, directly bombed, children's hospital and maternity ward. Three people died. Uh, one of uh, them was uh, a small kid. Uh, I can show you numerous pictures of pregnant women on the ninth month of pregnancy that uh, were carried away from the totally uh, ruined uh, building. And that is the reality. Uh, Ukraine is part of Europe. That's what we hear from Europe, uh, members of European Parliament. So the whole Europe is in danger. So what we ask for, uh, we, we ask for um, the, uh, providing uh, the very precise mechanism for Ukraine to join the European Union. European Parliament um, uh, was greeting uh, President Zelensky's speech uh, a few weeks ago. We also um, need a, a concrete mechanism from European Council and we urge all the uh, member states of European Union to support Ukraine on its way to European 
European Union because we are defending Europe right now. Um, also, we call for um, uh, further support from the countries with uh, weapons. We need uh, javelins, we need stingers, we need end laws. And, of course, what we need is a no-fly zone over Ukraine. And we need um, uh, also the battle jets, uh, which some of the members of, uh, of NATO and of European Union have that could be uh, given to Ukraine, and also air defense missiles. Because those numbers that I uh, mentioned, 52 children and over 400 civilians that died, they died because of the missiles coming to the city, to peaceful cities, and killing uh, those people. Putin wants to swipe off the whole nation from the uh, uh, face of the earth. And we need to stop it. If we still believe in values, we share uh, all together. Thank you. Thank you, Genia. Now we will take questions, if there are questions. Oh, oh sorry, I, yeah. Lisa, sorry. <laughs> Well, my name is Lisa Yasko. I'm also a member of the Zelensky party, but now it doesn't matter of what political affiliation do you have right now, because now we all are very united because we are going through very deep tragedy. Deep tragedy when our nation, our society is being killed. And I'm asking all of you, please, let's not have illusions that tomorrow, for example, Putin will stop. He is not going to stop if we don't make it happen. We may not have tomorrow. Many lives we may lose because we are not sometimes having enough measures and sanctions and actions that we could do to prevent this war from happening. As my colleague said, there are so many killed killings right now, ruined infrastructure. And it looks like Putin is targeting to, uh, to, to kill as many civilians as, as possible, to kill hope, to kill smiles of children. And I, I shared today in one of the meetings that one of the things that I, I mentioned, uh, I noticed about myself when I crossed the border coming here is that I finally could hear the birds singing. I didn't hear any birds singing when we are there. And I'm asking all of you, please, let's not have illusions. Right now, we may develop mechanisms to protect the human rights situation, not only in Ukraine, but also in Europe. It concerns everyone right now. Because you are getting right now more and more refugees coming from Ukraine, more and more pain. We may stop that altogether. If we don't, then Putin may come to the border to your countries and take more lives. And this is important that we act right now. We have different tools that can be developed. No-fly zone, different sanctions, different human rights mechanism, uh, protection. It's possible right now. Everything that is done right now to kill us is a real war crime. And they may not be tomorrow if we don't act today. Thank you. Thank you also for your statement. So we would be up now for one or two questions while we have the interpretation only until 11 o'clock. <clears throat> that means if there is anybody in the room or online who would like to raise a question to the colleagues, please introduce quickly yourself and then a short question. Hi, good morning. Tommaso Olecca with uh, AG uh, Italian News Agency. Uh, so I have a first question concerning uh, the numbers because unfortunately also we journalists have many troubles at finding reliable sources in the, on the ground. And uh, so you spoke before about 52 uh, children which have uh, lost their lives already in this conflict. I would like to know if you have any estimation of the total number uh, of, uh, of people that already died uh, on the Ukrainian side and also if you have some on the Russian side as well. And uh, another, another question about the no-fly zone. So I see that you are very uh, convinced on this request, that you are very persuaded that it's something that you need for uh, winning this uh, war. On the other side, uh, many analysts are saying that a no-fly zone uh, from the European side uh, would uh, be uh, a war declaration against Russia. Aren't you concerned that uh, something like a no-fly zone would generate uh, a bigger conflict on your territory, which uh, would cause, uh, uh, of course, uh, bigger damage and maybe uh, more uh, life loss? Thank you. 
Thank you very much for this. Who would like to pick one or the Colleagues, other? I can take it very quickly. The UN or uh, OHCR recorded 1,335 confirmed civilian casualties in Ukraine, 474 killed, 861 injured. And of course, the uh, the, the numbers are growing. We've we've mentioned uh, a separate record on kids, and it's from the 9th of March. So basically, from yesterday. Uh, Sorry, and the troops, the troops, it is very true that there is it's a thousand per day. So it's already 12,000 from Russian side, from 12, Russian 12, side. troops. We are critically asking International Red Cross to help us deliver them out of Ukraine. We don't want them in Ukraine. So uh, I will uh, also comment on the numbers. Uh, it is impossible to give you an exact number of civilian casualties. Why? Because every day new bodies are being uncovered from the rubble that has become of such glorious cities in Ukraine like Mariupol, like Volnovakha, like Kahovka, like almost all of the Sumy region and Dokhtyrka, the very famous city there, which was completely trashed by, by Russians. So as our special services recover bodies from the rubble, the number keeps growing. Uh, unfortunately, no agency, neither inside the country nor outside, can give you an exact number. We Ukrainians, when we give you the numbers, we give you the official numbers that are coming from our uh, emergency services and that are coming from uh, the office of the president of Ukraine. So this is the numbers you get from Ukraine. For the military casualties of the Ukrainian army, uh, this is uh, something that is not disclosed as it poses a security risk. So you will not be seeing those numbers. The numbers that you are seeing from uh, the casualties of the Russian army are uh, also average numbers, which we give. Uh, we have an exact number, but again, security defense reasons. You will not be getting uh, exact numbers. This is the same for every single war, for every single conflict that you have ever covered. Uh, for the question about the no-fly zone, we admit to the answer which is given to us that there will be no-fly zone for Ukraine, but only with the word yet at the end of it. Because we have heard the same answer no when we asked to quit the Nord Stream 2 project. We were being told no. Where is Nord Stream 2 now? We uh, heard no when we asked to switch Russia off from the SWIFT. We heard no. Where is Russia and SWIFT now? So the same will be for the no-fly zone. And I'm telling you this with great confidence because uh, it is a responsibility that NATO member states and every one of your states has in front of the people of you to have this no-fly zone over Ukraine. Why? It's simple. Ukraine is asking for the no-fly zone as a responsible partner of international relations that we are. In Ukraine, we have uh, hazardous objects, such as nuclear power plants, five of those. If Russian missiles, by mistake on, or on purpose, hit one of those, you are looking at a nuclear catastrophe bigger, 15 times bigger than that of Chernobyl in 1986. That will affect every single one of you and every single person living on the European continent and beyond. This is a, a nuclear catastrophe of the scale the world has never seen before. And you know what? Putin will not have to press that red button. He will just be sending a missile. And that missile, and we know by now that Russian missiles uh, have issues with hitting military targets because they hit hospitals, they hit schools, and they hit power stations. So uh, mind that, and uh, I think it's an appeal that we are making to the international community and to the world leaders to actually act responsibly towards their own citizens and protect their own citizens, not just Ukrainians. Uh, rem uh, just be reminded of the fact Putin will not have to press the red button. I would maybe ask one more. If somebody has one more question short, then we would take it. Otherwise, I would just, Jenia, give uh, the floor for... Oh, there's one more. Please, very short, because we are running out of yeah, time. Yeah, thank you. I'm Laura Fernoza from the Spanish News Agency. I'm interested right now on your personal futures. You clearly would not be able to come back to Ukraine for a while. Uh, how do you plan to continue your advocacy uh, work in Europe? Uh, where are you going to be settled? Thank you. 
Uh, well, you are very wrong. We are going back in um, a few days after uh, uh, after PACE, you know, the Parliamentary Assembly of Control, um, uh, Council of Europe will have the special meeting on Monday and next Tuesday on Ukraine. So, and we are all together, the members of PACE delegation, uh, and we decided, of course, to cover European Parliament as, uh, the, you know, the heart of democracy of European Union. So that's why uh, uh, we are here and we will be going back to Ukraine for sure. Um, and uh, uh, another thing um, uh, to uh, um, answer um, uh, the, the, the question of your previous uh, colleague about the no-fly zone and what uh, we ask for. Uh, right now, the casualties are, uh, in civilians are um, um, over 400. Um, 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 it will rise. I'm sorry to say it will rise every day. Uh, but we uh, understand that Putin will not stop, but we will not give up. So Putin will be bombing the civilians, will be bombing the cities, will be bombing children. We are fighting for our state. All the nation is fighting for our state, for the independence, and we will never give up. Uh, intelligence of Western countries said that uh, Russian soldiers will be in Kyiv in three days. It's been more than two weeks. They didn't uh, gain Kharkiv. They didn't gain uh, Kyiv. My husband is fighting near Kyiv, and he says that I will not give up, and I will not let uh, uh, them uh, into the capital. And President Zelensky stays in Kyiv. He will stay in Kyiv, the government works, the parliament works. We had already two meetings of the parliament since the beginning of this uh, big war. Also, another thing about what we need, we need the air defense system. It's a special um, um, a system that can ruin the missiles that are coming to our cities. And also, we need uh, battle jets to, uh, to, do it, uh, to, to save our um, uh, air by ourselves. That's also the biggest, one of the biggest uh, uh, needs uh, from uh, uh, European Union countries, especially those who have the uh, battle jets, MiG and Su, uh, which uh, our um, um, uh, soldiers can fly. Thank you. Virginia, one more question from the room because we are actually run out of time and we will have no interpretation. And very short, just one answer from your side, I'll please. Leave the, I'll leave the answer to that. I'm Edith Vries from the Netherlands. You are traveling now through Europe. Will you also go to The Hague, to the International Crime Court? Are you going to complain about Putin and the war crimes? Are you going to start procedures to get him indicted in The Hague? Colleagues, just I can one, get, one I can get this question because I was in Hague uh, one day, I, I returned from the Hague one day before uh, Putin uh, shelled, uh, started shelling and bombing our cities because um, I had, I'm, I'm working on the resolution of peace but women in conflict um, and uh, peace reconciliation. So I had meetings in ICC uh, and uh, we already um, have uh, the confirmation from Prosecutor Han from ICC that uh, he, um, he already started the investigation, Han, yeah, Mr. Han. Uh, and we are sending uh, all the um, um, you know, pictures, all the, uh, as Maria already said, all, um, uh, all the uh, information about the war crimes that are happening in Ukraine. And we also urge and we all think that sh the special tribunal should be imposed by United Nations countries to, uh, uh, to have a, a proper uh, court and um, a pr proper punishment on uh, 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 those who uh, gave the orders uh, to, uh, to kill civilians and, and, of course, Putin as well. And also we have started a hearing in the International Court of United Nations. It already started. Okay. Thank you so much. So now we really have to close. Uh, we already took a lot of time from the European People's Party because they were actually arranging the next meeting. So thanks for your great attention and there will be bilateral meetings later on. Colleagues will be happy to share uh, their contacts uh, with you. Thank one you so more, much. May I please have just one more uh, minute of your attention? We just received as we were standing here news that one of our colleagues, a uh, very uh, big activist in Ukraine, Yevhenyi Deidei, was shot dead by Russia troops as he was taking part in the defense of Ukraine. He was a member of parliament of the 8th convocation, Yevhenyi Deidei. And it is a news which is shaking us up as we speak now. People who we know personally, people 
who have fought for Ukraine in the political realm, in the battlefield, they are dying as we speak. These are the real heroes of Ukraine, and I ask you to honor that. And there are already mayors who are unfortunately are wounded and, and even killed, and uh, we don't know the numbers because many people remain without connection. So unfortunately, we can only pray right now so that they stay alive.